Good Monday afternoon, guys. My name is Jerry Miller, and welcome to the I Love Seville show. Thank you kindly for joining us. It is glorious, a glorious day to be alive and above the mud. We're live in Charlottesville, the Commonwealth, the country, and the world on the I Love Seville network. We're presented by Skuma Boutique Dispensary. Skuma Boutique Dispensary in the Charlottesville downtown mall next to Rapture Restaurant. David and his staff have made the dispensary business approachable. Honest, authentic. Their certificates of analyses let you know exactly what you're buying. Skuma Boutique Dispensary. If you need to get to sleep, tell them the I Love Seville show sent you. Ting Fiber Internet powers the network. Scott Wagner Integrated Medicine, a fantastic partner of the show. In fact, everyone you see on screen, a valued partner of the I Love Seville network. So much to cover today, including Louisa's, Louisa County Schools changing their mind. We highlighted Louisa on Thursday on this network. We asked them what the heck were they doing from not requiring masks inside the schools. On Friday, they changed their mind and require masks. We'll talk about that on the I Love Seville show. UVA mandating mask inside its building. Corporate America is also following suit. We'll let you know which companies in corporate America are requiring mask and vaccinations at their brands and businesses. I'm going to ask you about Junction Restaurant. I miss seeing Melissa Close Heart. I love the food at Junction Restaurant. I love the ambiance at Junction. Junction has not opened in Belmont. We'll chitter chatter Junction today on the I Love Seville show. We'll talk travel costs versus housing costs. So many people buying homes outside the epicenter of employment, the city of Charlottesville, and outer counties that are 45 minutes to one hour away driving time from the city of Seville where the jobs are located. Yes, you can buy more affordable housing 45 minutes to one hour away, but at what cost and when does the delta between the cost of housing and the money you're saving buying in the outer counties start getting eradicated or disappear when you have to put a hell of a lot of gas in your car, your truck, or your vehicle. That topic on today's edition of the I Love Seville show. Jazz Fest has been canceled in New Orleans because of the Delta variant. There are 10.1 million job openings in America right now. That's an all-time record historical high for the United States of America. 10.1 million jobs open. We have roughly 320 million people in this country and 10.1 million jobs currently unfilled. Bobby Bowden's legacy, I will assess it today on the program. And folks, I will relay my experience in Brooklyn, New York to you and what Brooklyn is doing differently than Charlottesville and Central Virginia. If you want to make an impact on this program, if you want to share your, your perspective, your thoughts, your ideas, put them in the comment section on any of the social media platforms you're watching this show upon and I will relay them on air. If you're like Scott Aaronworth, the Esquire from Virginia Beach, you can set the pace and tempo on this program by texting or DMing me ideas about what to cover on the show. The lead of the program, guys, is something I'm passionate about. Today, from 1 p.m. to 3 p.m., the Blue Ridge Health District is offering free vaccinations on the downtown mall in front of the Ting Pavilion. They have both the Johnson & Johnson and Pfizer vaccine readily available from 1 p.m. to 3 p.m. in front of the Ting Pavilion on the downtown mall. I encourage everyone watching this show to get vaccinated and to mask up. My take on vaccinations and mask is this. You want freedom? You want rights? You want to be able to do what you want? You want to be able to come and go as you please? You want to be able to eat and drink inside restaurants and patronize the businesses you love? Well, the way we get that is by masking up and getting vaccinated. Folks, vaccinations and wearing the mask is our ticket to rights and freedom. We put pants on, don't we? We put a shirt on, don't we? we required, we're required to wear shoes to patronize businesses. Aren't we? So if no shirt, no shoes, no service is a requirement to going inside a business or to patronizing a place of employment, why not wear the mask on your face? No shirt, no shoes, 
no mass, no service. Okay? The mass has been politicized, unfortunately. You don't see underwear, tidy whities boxer briefs, and panties being politicized, do you? No, you don't. Do you see Lululemon pants, Under Armour pants? Do you see J. Crew, Banana Republic pants, Brooks Brothers button downs, politicized? Roback collared shirts, politicized? Do you see Lulu sports bras, politicized? Lulu yoga pants, politicized? No, you don't. Unfortunately, the mask has become a political, divisive lightning rod. And it's time we move beyond this lightning rod for the betterment of the nation and for the freedom we all want in Q3 and Q4, especially as kids return back to school, children that are unvaccinated, returning to poorly ventilated hallways and school structures, school buildings, as we get back from vacation this August and get back to September, which is staying in Charlottesville, and as we head into flu season, we have to combat the KPIs, the key performance indicators that undoubtedly indicate the Delta variant is ready to peak and spread wildly in Central Virginia. How we combat the KPIs and the spread of the Delta variant is getting the shot and wearing the mask. Just do it, in the words of Phil Knight and Nike. 1 to 3 p.m., Ting Pavilion, Blue Ridge Health District, has got the J&J &J and the Pfizer ready to go. Now let's talk macro and let's talk corporate America, my friends. COVID and this Delta is sweeping America. Delta is infecting people in our country at a higher frequency and clip than COVID did last summer. The facts back it up. There are now more than a dozen large U.S. companies, including Walmart, Google, Tyson Foods, and United Airlines, that have mandated the vaccination for all its employees. You don't get vaccinated, you get canned. You don't get the shot, you get pink slipped. You don't get injected, peace out, hasta luego. CNN fired employees for refusing to get vaccinated. This, my friend, is the future of many brands and businesses in corporate America. And as corporate America implements this mandate, watch it trickle down the totem pole to mom and pops. They will get the courage, they will get the gumption, they will get the backbone to also mandate vaccinations. If a Walmart, if a Google, if a Delta, if a United, if a Tyson Foods, if a CNN is doing the same damn thing. Mask up and get the shot. It's how we protect our freedom and our rights in this country. All right, Louisa County Schools, we put them on the spotlight on the Thursday edition of the I Love Seville show. I highlighted a couple of key performance indicators for the county of Louisa. For example, Louisa right now, not doing super great with getting vaccinated. In fact, less than half of the county of Louisa has gotten, has gotten the injection in their arm. Louisa also, it's Superintendent Doug Straley, who's a friend of mine. Doug Straley, I love you. Doug Straley, I remember when I was a staff writer for the Louisa County Lions, for the, the Daily Progress, excuse me. And Doug, I remember when I was covering the Louisa County Lions as a staff writer for the newspaper. You had Mark Fisher as your head football coach. You had Rontre Houchins. You had Eric Church. You had Jeff Melhaff. You had the jungle. You had Bubba the Lion being driven and pushed around the cart in a cage. I mean, you had the best football experience in Central Virginia, and Doug Straley, a lot of that was because of you. Doug, I love you, man. I absolutely love you. On the Thursday edition of the I Love Seville show, we asked why you were not requiring masks for students in your hallways and classrooms. We highlighted some key points, Mr. Straley, Dr. Straley, and we said, the vaccination rate in Louisa is below 50%. We said children, what? Who goes to school? 
4 to 12, children age 4 to 12 are unvaccinated right now because it hasn't been cleared for kids in that age bracket. And we asked very respectfully, very intelligently, we challenged why you are allowing students to return to school with the choice of wearing a mask or not. We held you accountable. Well, that was Thursday. By Friday, the decision had been changed. Now if you're going to school in Louisa, you're masking up. You're masking up, and you got no choice about it. It's a good move. And you know what? We give you the applause. Tough decisions are made by strong leaders. And a strong leader is undoubtedly Doug Straley, the superintendent of Louisa. And sometimes the toughest decisions are the decisions that likely are very unpopular with your constituents. But that's why you've been voted to office, that's why you've been hired or promoted to the superintendent position, to make tough decisions, unpopular decisions. And when less than half of your county has been vaccinated, you know a mandate of requiring students to wear masks in schools is gonna be unpopular with many, if not most, of your jurisdiction. But guess what? It's the right decision. And the best leaders make unpopular decisions. They have thick skin, and they realize the decision-making they're doing in the long run will be seen as the right decision with the benefit of hindsight. Doug Straley, it's the right decision to have your kids wearing masks in schools. All right, next topic, UVA mandating mask inside its buildings for all students and employees. That mandate started today. Folks, I'm going to give you a couple of KPIs here. You got UVA students returning to grounds over the next 10 days. You got elementary, middle school, and high school students returning to poorly ventilated buildings literally as we speak right now. You have mommies and daddies and little Johnnies and little Susies returning from vacations all over the country back to Charlottesville right now. You got flu season right around the corner. You got cold weather right around the corner when we aggregate and hang out inside a lot more than we do in the summer and spring months. There's a lot of factors that are colliding at once that indicate a spread is on the near horizon. UVA students come back. Kids go back to classrooms, many of them unvaccinated. Moms and dads and their families returning to vac from vacations as we speak. Cold months, flu season on the near horizon. Collision of a number of factors literally happening right now. UVA requiring vaccinations for students if they want to learn on grounds. And now a mask mandate for employees and students while inside UVA own and managed buildings. University of Virginia. Well done, well done. Now here's an interesting turn of events, my friends. A very interesting turn of events. The United States Teachers Union has shifted its stance on the COVID vaccination. Previously, the United States Teachers Union did not lobby for vaccinations for teachers. Previously, the United States Teachers Union said it's up to the teacher to make the choice. Well, on Sunday, the second largest teachers union, the head of this union, Randy Weingarten, the president of the American Federation of Teachers, told NBC News, Meet the Press, it's a program on Sunday, that we need vaccinations for all teachers and it should be a mandate. Ms. Weingart said, and I quote, it weighs really heavily on me that kids under 12 cannot get vaccinated. I felt the need to stand up and say this is a matter of personal conscience. The number of children hospitalized with COVID is rising across the country. Folks, these are facts. 
These are facts. You can't dispute what I'm saying. They are facts. Now, the second largest teachers union is saying a requirement for teachers and vaccinations is a must. Guess what? I agree with her, and I applaud her for making a tough decision, perhaps an unpopular one, but the long-term right one. Now, speaking of teachers, I saw this on Facebook. Here's an interesting tidbit for Charlottesville City School teachers. Charlottesville City School teachers no longer will get COVID leave this year. Last year, if you got COVID and you were a teacher, you got COVID leave and you did, not have to use, you did not have to use your sick time or your vacation time. Now, if you get COVID, if you have to stay home and watch your child who may have COVID, if you get COVID yourself, if you're a city teacher, if one of your kids gets COVID and you have to stay home, you have to use your own six leave or vacation time. That's very different than it was last year. Now, if you're a teacher or your children get it, your vacation time and your sick time must be utilized as opposed to COVID leave time. Interesting turn of events for Charlottesville City Schools that's got a lot of teachers a little irritated in the city of Charlottesville. Next topic. I don't understand this topic. In fact, this is what I have to say about the topic I'm about to cover. Almaro County is not Almaro County is not requiring vaccinations for its employees. Almaro County is not tracking vaccination status for its employees. I do not understand the leadership in this position from the Almaro County Board of Supervisors nor the Albemarle County School Board. In fact, many of you know I'm running for Albemarle County Board of Supervisors, Scottsville District, the incumbent Donna Price. If I'm elected and we're still dealing with this position, there is no doubt I would be in favor of tracking which employees in Albemarle have been vaccinating and very much pushing her in favor of vaccinations for anyone that's employed by the county of Albemarle. Those that are in leadership right now in Albemarle County, school board and board of supervisors, I have this to say to you. One more time. Get with it. Make the tough decision. Yes, I know this could lead to some unpopularity with your constituents and with your neighbors and friends in your jurisdiction. You've been voted into office to make tough decisions. Get some thick damn skin, see the forest through the trees, and help lead us to the promised land. That's why we have voted you into office. You hear me, school board and board of supervisors? Stop being this. Pisses me off. All right, let's talk travel. Thomas Jefferson. Thomas Jefferson Planning District Commission had a great little infographic that, that started going viral on social media over the weekend. A lot of people buying homes in the outer counties. You're talking Buckingham. You're talking Louisa. You're talking deep into Orange, Nelson, and Green. They're doing it because the price points are way more affordable than Albemarle in the city of Charlottesville. I totally get it. I'm empathetic. I can undoubtedly relate. The Planning District Commission put out an infographic assuming a cost of 58 cents per mile for, a 20, for 20 days of round-trip commuting. If you have to go from Lake Monticello one way, just 15 miles from Lake Monticello to the epicenter of employment, the city of Charlottesville, that one-way trip over 20 days a month is going to cost you 358 bucks, 348 bucks. If you're going from Ruckersville, Ruckersville 
17 miles one way, over 20 days a month, that one-way trip is going to cost you 394 bucks in fuel and wear and tear of your car. Let's talk Crozet, 18 miles one way, 418 bones that's going to cost you. Boys and girls, Lovingston, 33 miles one way, 20 days a month to the epicenter of employment, the city of Charlottesville. That's going to cost you 766 bucks. Louisa County, 766. So my friends, viewers and listeners, I encourage you to please consider, to please extrapolate, please do an Excel spreadsheet, and please assess the opportunity cost of buying a home that may be 150K, 200K, less than Albemarle and Charlottesville. On paper, that's a sizable chunk of money. But if you're spending between 348 and 766 a month in travel costs, and you stay at this home for seven to 10 years, that's going to add up very quickly. Let's use 750 times 12 months times 10 years. That's $90,000 in travel costs. And that does not even consider the opportunity cost of your time in a vehicle. Time spent not enjoying life, time spent not improving your job position or climbing the vertical totem pole of career path, time spent away from your son, your daughter, your wife, your husband, and your family. The infographic I will put on the I Love Seville network. Be sure to follow us on Instagram. We have the third largest Instagram community behind UVA in the city of Charlottesville in central Virginia. I'll put it on there at the conclusion of this show. Folks, if you have comments, if you have suggestions, if you want me to mention something on air, please put them in the comment section and I will relay them on air. Christelle is watching. She's a fabulous businesswoman, the director of catering at CNO, and someone that makes this program considerably, considerably better with her comments and perspective. Christelle says this, Fluvanna just held an emergency meeting and will now require mask, reversing their vote of making mask optional. Christelle, I give the round of applause to Fluvanna. And I'm responding to your comment right now and saying, thank you for sharing this. I relayed this on air, my friend. Thank you, Christelle. This comment comes in from great God, Grayson, you watch our show regularly. I love you, Grayson. Um, thank you very much. Jerry, I saw the Louisa County school decision reversal. Thank you for bringing this to our attention on Thursday, and thank you for putting pressure on leaders in the community. You holding people accountable may not always be the popular decision, as you said, but it's what's needed now and why so many of us watch your show. It's your fearlessness that is the attraction. Thank you, Grayson. All right, next topic today on the I Love Seville show. Johnny Ornalis, thank you, my friend, for watching the program. We love you, Johnny Ornalis. Um, the next topic on the show, my friends, is a restaurant I miss dearly. My beautiful wife and I, we held our rehearsal dinner at Junc Junction Restaurant in Belmont. We were the first rehearsal dinner ever hosted and held in Junction Restaurant history. Scott Aaronworth, a viewer and listener of this program, he's an Esquire in Virginia Beach, a tremendous foodie and supporter of the Charlottesville culinary scene. Scott Aaronworth, a friend of the show and a stand-up guy. He texted me yesterday as I was taking the Amtrak from Penn Station to Charlottesville. And he said, what's going on with Junction? I said, you know what? That's a good topic for the show. And as a result, we're talking about it today. That's how you get topics on the show. Shoot me a DM on any of the social platforms and say, have you considered this idea? And 99.9% .9 of the time, it will be on a show in the very near future. 
I sat there scratching my head for a moment and I said, I miss Melissa Close Hart. I miss her cuisine. I miss the cocktails, the ambiance, the experience of Junction Restaurant. We hosted our rehearsal dinner there, so it's got a special place in our hearts because so many family and friends came together to celebrate the union of two people, my wife and I. Junction has been closed since the start of this pandemic. Junction has a luxury, if you may, in that its sister restaurant, the local restaurant right across the street, has been open for most of this pandemic, largely in a to-go food fashion. Melissa's husband, the fabulous Matty Hart, is the executive chef at the local. Melissa has been contributing her tremendous food talents to the local. The owner of the local also owns Junction. His name is Adam Frazier. He's a Belmontonian who lives on one of the key streets, I'm not going to blow up where he lives, in Belmont. Adam not only owns the Junction and the local, but Adam also owns the real estate that houses Junction and the local. Adam and his team have made the decision to combine staff and forces to make the local as good as it could possibly get. And guys, the local is damn good. The food is delicious. The menu is approachable. It's priced fairly. It's served quick and hot. And it's served from the soul. All that being said, I miss the ambiance of Junction, which is very different than the ambiance of the local. It's two different menus, two different themes, two different motifs. Melissa, if someone tells you about this, or if you're watching the show yourself, I miss seeing you. I miss your food. I miss your hospitality and how you came to the table to greet your customers. I miss the cocktails. I miss the happy hour and the appetizers. I miss sitting outside and watching Belmontonians whiz by in front of the market across the street. You have a very eclectic neighborhood in Belmont. And the Junction offered a fantastic vantage point to experience that neighborhood. I hope in the near future, you open this restaurant again. I really, truly do. Next topic is an interesting one. And the opinion I'm about to give you on this topic may surprise you. I'm going to ask you this question. Is Chick-fil-A good for shopping centers? Is Chick-fil-A good for Barracks Road? Now, on paper and on first glance, you may say, of course Chick-fil-A is good for shopping centers. It's going to drive thousands of customers every day to that shopping center, and they may trickle over and patronize and support the other businesses in said shopping center. For example, Barracks Road. Chick-fil-A is replacing Bear Burger King in the federal realty-owned Barracks Road Shopping Center. I say, in the words of Lee Corso, not so fast, my friends. A Chick-fil-A in a shopping center is going to create a long line of vehicles and a log jam of traffic. If the shopping center is not designed correctly, that long line of vehicles and that log jam of traffic will in some ways negatively impact the merchants associated or closely positioned to the Chick-fil-A's. Here's a good example. How many of you guys have experienced the Starbucks on Pantops? Have you been to the Starbucks on Pantops? Have you seen the Starbucks on Pantops when there's 30, 40, 50 cars in the drive through because people have an addiction to coffee? Have you seen what happens when the Starbucks drive through line wraps around the Starbucks shopping center on Pantops? It literally 
is negatively impacting the merchants closely associated with the Starbucks in that shopping center. I believe it's a pet value that's over there. It's a pet store of some kind. That one went out of business. The pet store, a couple of stores down from the Starbucks on Pantops, went out of business, boys and girls. Who's going to patronize a business like a pet store next to a Starbucks when you can't find a shopping, when you can't find a parking space right in front of it? That means you're going to have to lug and carry a 50-pound bag of dog food hundreds of yards because the drive through of Starbucks is cannibalizing parking spaces and negatively impacting demand. Is that going to happen at the Chick-fil-A in Barracks Road? Time will tell. Let's not immediately assume that businesses like Chick-fil-A and Starbucks are good for neighbors that are also in business. Here's another example. The Starbucks on 5th Street Extended. Who's patronized the Starbucks on 5th Street Extended, close to the Wegmans and 5th Street Station Shopping Center? Have you seen how odd the layout is for that shopping center and how drive-through traffic becomes an issue for that island shopping center on 5th Street Extended? It negatively impacts that shopping center and undoubtedly will impact the merchants that choose to rent next to the Starbucks. On paper and on first glance, you would think being next to a Starbucks or a Chick-fil-A means you get trickle over traffic. If you do a little bit more research, you may find that traffic frightens people away because they don't want to deal with the log jam of traffic. All right, next topic. Did you see this one? This is a concerning one. New Orleans Jazz Fest has been canceled in 2021 due to COVID-19. Louisiana broke its own COVID record related to hospitalizations last week. Jazz Fest, an annual event that is a tremendous driver for the New Orleans economy, has been closed, has been shut down, has been canceled. The festival, which normally takes place over two weekends in late April and early May, had been moved to October of this year. Well, the October of this year Jazz Fest Festival is no more because hospitalizations and cases are spiking and going through the roof. I repeat, I repeat, and it comes from a place of empathy, kindness, consideration, and the long-term betterment, betterment of our community. If we want our freedoms and our rights to go to events like Jazz Fest, to go to events like Lockin in Nelson County, to go to events like Fridays After Five at the Ting Pavilion, to patronize the downtown mall and its many restaurants and bars, if we want the freedom and the right to go inside places to shop and to support local mom and pops, the best way to do this is to get vaccinated and to wear your mask until we get this Delta variant under control. If we do not do this, the cancellation of Jazz Fest will undoubtedly be something we see in this area, whether that's lock-in, whether that's fall football at UVA, high school football at the many programs in Central Virginia, at the high school level, whether that's Fridays after five, whether that's dining inside, none of us want that. None of us want that. None of us want that. Start seeing the KPIs, the key performance indicators that I'm seeing. When Jazz Fest gets canceled in April, gets pushed back to October, and now is canceled in October, you must realize that this is a KPI that could impact Central Virginia. All right, next topic on the I Love Seville show. There are 10.1 one million job openings in America. 
the Labor Department said today, in the final day of June, 10.1 million jobs were unfilled. That's an increase of 900,000 from May. At the end of May, there were 9.2 million jobs open. At the end of June, 10.1 million. This is the largest amount of unfilled jobs in U.S. economic history. In the history of the United States economy, we have never had this many open jobs before. It is a shocking amount of open jobs. I'm going to Google USA population literally as we speak. The population of the United States of America is 328 million people. 328 million. Of those 328 million people, how many are kids and early teens out of the job market? Quite a few. I don't have that exact answer for you. If you take the kids, the children, the early teens who are not in the job market, I can assure you that number gets probably closer to 250 million. If you take away folks on the older scale of the spectrum that are retired, that are more geriatric, that are unable to work, I bet you that number gets closer to 200 million of people that are able to work and join the workforce. So if there's 10.1 million open jobs and roughly 200 million people in the workforce, that means 5% of the workforce is not working. It's a shocking number. A shocking number. Next topic, guys, Bobby Bowden, rest in power. Bobby Bowden, the head football coach at one time for Florida State, a man who turned the Seminoles into a global brand, a man who turned Florida State football into a feared and respected brand of pigskin. Bobby Bowden passed away over the weekend. The Bobby Bowden I remember as a student at the University of Virginia, as someone who started his career as a sports writer for the Daily Progress, as a broadcaster for ESPN Radio, and as a television host and executive producer for NBC 29, the Bobby Bowden I remembered, the Bobby Bowden I interviewed for print, for radio, and for television, had the pleasure to interview this man multiple times as a broadcaster and as a print writer. The Bobby Bowden I remember was someone who was competitive, someone who had fire, someone who was a tremendous leader, Someone who was a leader of young men. The Bobby Bowden I remember was a man who had vision, work ethic, passion, hustle and chutzpah, and a knack for getting victories, bull appearances, and contending for national championships. Since Bobby Bowden retired from Florida State football, the Seminoles have been an afterthought or a shadow of their former selves. Long gone are the days of Peter Warwick, of Warwick Dunn, of Chris Winkie. Long gone are the days of Charlie Ward. Long gone are the days of Florida State being a national contender. And while that may be good for the ACC and certainly my beloved UVA football team, I still wax nostalgic on the days of Bobby Bowden and his Florida State football team being perennial powers in a dynasty of epic proportions. The last topic I want to cover today before I hear and listen to your perspective on the I Love Seville show is the experience I enjoyed this past weekend with my beautiful wife in Brooklyn, New York. I took the Amtrak on Friday morning from West Main, next to the former Wild Wing Cafe. And I hopped on the train to Penn Station. 
it took just over six hours to go from the Amtrak on West Main to Penn Station in Midtown. It cost me 106 bucks, 106, to make that trip. I then walked out of Penn Station, I flagged down a cabbie, and I told him to take me to Wyth Avenue in Brooklyn where we were staying in the Huxton Hotel. The cab ride from Penn Station to Brooklyn, New York, cost about 35 bucks. That's it. So I was able to get from Amtrak on West Main to Penn Station in Midtown Big Apple, and then a cab ride to Wyth Avenue in Brooklyn, Williamsburg, the Williamsburg area of Brooklyn, for $141. That's not bad, dude. I mean, you talk about the time and the gas and the tolls to get from Charlottesville to Brooklyn, you're probably talking a full tank of gas, 40, 50 bucks, and you're probably talking 40 or 50 bucks in tolls. And then you have to deal with the aggravation of sitting in traffic and the wear and tear on your vehicle. You're coming out ahead on the Amtrak. You're able to sit there and do work on your laptop. I showed up thanks to my friend Keith Smith who picked me up from our Keswick abode, dropped me off at the train, what, Keith, four minutes before it took off, maybe four minutes. I didn't have to show up 45 minutes early like you do in an airplane. Got on the train, had plenty of leg room and seat room. You can bring Bodo's bagels or your food of your choice on the Amtrak. Heck, if it's cocktail hour, you can bring a beverage of your choice in your bag and drink it on the train. I would very much encourage you to do that. Keith gave me that recommendation. So hear me out. You can get from Charlottesville, Virginia to Midtown, New York for 106 bucks. You can bring food on the train. You can bring booze on the train. You have leg room. You don't have to show up early, 45 minutes. You can show up a couple minutes early. You don't have to pay for Wi-Fi like you do on a plane. It's not that crowded. You can put your seat back and take a nap if you want. You can watch a movie on your laptop or your phone. If you want to go to Brooklyn, the cab ride's going to cost you about 35 bucks. It was a pleasant experience. Once we got to Brooklyn, here are some unique things we experienced. One of the bars we went to, it was called Thief in Brooklyn. We heard it made some of the best cocktails in Williamsburg, so we made sure we went there. As soon as we got in line at this particular watering hole, the bouncer asked for proof of vaccination for anyone entering the bar. You had to show it. New York City and the state of New York has a passport, a New York passport, that a lot of Big Apple and Brooklynites are using. You download the passport, you show it to the bouncer, and he lets you in. My wife and I, we live in Virginia, obviously, we had to show the printed card, the vaccination printed card that many of us had to get into this particular bar. Easy peasy, peace of mind while sitting in this smaller watering hole, knowing that the folks in this watering hole had proof of vaccination. The hotel we were staying at required masks for people inside when they were not in their rooms. Williamsburg is a thriving neighborhood of Brooklyn, very family-oriented. If you're looking for an excursion for a long weekend, this experience was absolutely delightful. A long weekend in Brooklyn, eating what you want, drinking what you want, and staying in a nice hotel, six to 800 bucks you and your significant other. You leave recharge, that includes transportation. You, you leave recharge, rejuvenated, and ready to rock and roll on a Monday. It was absolutely fantastic. I encourage everybody to follow us on Instagram. I'm gonna give you a quick preview of what's in store for the program this week. Tomorrow, Alex Erpe, the CEO of Emerging Financial Services. Wednesday, Earl Smith of Scottsville, one of the influencers in Scottsville on Wednesday for part two. Part two, if you missed the first episode, don't miss the second. 
Earl Smith on Wednesday, and Lee Elberson, the CEO of Claiborne Education, on Thursday's edition of the I Love Seville show. The whole premise of today's show, the whole premise of every show we do, is to bring approachable information to you on social media platforms that you live upon, to help you become a more informed citizen, more educated consumer, a more knowledgeable constituent and citizen of Central Virginia. I want to thank you for joining us on the Monday edition. My name is Jerry Miller. You guys take care and be safe.